This is my friend Matt Carnahan, the director <laughs> of Love Inc. And he is, um, I would say, I don't, I don't know for sure, but probably the youngest leader in town of a major ministry, which is for Calais County as major as we get. Um, but Matt and I have had a great relationship uh, over these past couple years, just getting to know each other. And we both have a similar heart, wanting to resource the community somehow, make things better in Longview, Kelso, in Calais County. And we, uh, when I um, was envisioning what we were gonna do with CityServe, I sat down with Matt and we had a really good conversation about how we can work together. And so I'm delighted that he's here today to talk about what's in his heart for leadership. And um, Matt's also, I have to say, uh, is a member of the, he's one of the board members of, of city serve and so i just want to say publicly thank you matt for doing that no, it's welcome. been a huge encouragement to me honestly i want to i want to equip the people in our community to do what the lord has built them to do yeah um and and some people just need releasing and some people just need connected to like-minded people uh, and some people don't know don't know what's on their heart and they say Lord, I want to serve, and, and they don't know where to go. And I love being able to work with those people and build them up. Well, it, that's really cool because I think one of the things that trips up a lot of uh, leaders is they're, they're trying to figure out what they want to accomplish. What they, you know, and it's kind of like, what can I give my energy and effort to that's going to produce the biggest and best results? And it really seems like when I've talked to you and even this conversation right now, it really seems like you authentically care about the other people more than you care about yourself and what you're trying to create or what you're trying to accomplish, you know, for Love Inc. and, and for out of your own personal leadership style, styles. It's just like, it seems to be part of who you are that you really want to serve other people. And for an organization like Love Inc., how much more important could it be than just wanting to serve? Yeah. Yeah, uh, you, you know, you really have to lead by example, uh, and that's especially how the youth respond really, really well to it. Um, but but pouring into people is a lot more rewarding than pouring into to any individual program that you have. Uh, you know, once you, you build a bicycle and give it away, you know, that's it, and you're done, and you can follow up with that person. But if you've trained someone to repair bicycles, whether they're doing their own or they're working on somebody else's, uh, it, it multiplies that force. And that's that's what M Love, Inc. Inc. of Cowlitz County uh, should be and what our goal is to be uh, is to be that force multiplier and equip people to go out and more and more and so being able to sit down and say this is Jeff Jeff isn't just a pastor you know he's a real person right um, and being able to get to the bottom of, of who these people are and what breaks their heart and what skills they have and then being able to, to pray with them and figure out what the Lord where the Lord wants them to start and then the Lord takes it from there Well, there's, there's two different classifications of people, and the first is the people who, who don't care about you know, the credit or anything. They're just ready to get in and serve, and they just want other people to come alongside. Um, and I start both of them very similarly with, okay, I need to build a relationship with them, and in that relationship, find the very foundations, right? The very core reasons of why they do what they do. That once you find those motivations and those motivating factors, uh, we, can, we can build and extrapolate what their journey is going to look like from there. And there are people who I don't care who I have to work with or what I'm going to do, um, but I just want to serve and this is how I want to do it. And they plug in very easily with Love right. Inc. and other nonprofits. Um, there's a lot of times where people are doing similar things and we'll, we'll connect them with them and say, hey, I hear that you really enjoy working on vehicles. Did you know that there's two other teams doing that? Let's sit down and chat and see if you guys are doing the same thing. If you want to lead your own team, let's learn from some of their mistakes and get you a head start. Um, the other classification of people is the people that are very focused on wanting to start their own thing. Um, and there's, there's this misconception that if you want to be in ministry or you want to be in the nonprofit sector, you really have to start your own. Um, and, and a lot of people get caught up in this, uh, whether it's something like fixing up bikes um, or, or uh, something that's entirely ministry focused and like counseling yeah. um, person to person. Uh, they're breaking down to the core of those motivations and having the conversation of, uh, is it necessary for you to become established as your own nonprofit, or are you just ready to run, right? Does, is this something that needs to pay you? Is this something that you're gonna be doing 20 hours a week? Okay, can we talk about that, whether it can be underneath someone else's umbrella or Love Inc's umbrella, like the uh, food trailer we're remodeling right now. Right. Um, you know, he, he was planning on going and getting his own, but if he's able to be under our umbrella, he's going to be saving, you know, 
almost 100 hours a year of his time uh, by not doing those things. So being able to find their passions and then remove those obstacles from them, because very few pa people I know have the passion of working on paper. Paperwork right. is like, it's, it's gray, it's like a gray cubicle, right? That's what I imagine is just lifeless and sad. <laughs> Uh, but we have people who love working on paperwork, and I'm willing to take on that burden. And if I've already done 80% of the work for them, and it right. barely adds to my workload, I'd love to take that burden out of their way and give them 100 hours back to their year to go contribute back in our community. Well, you and I actually had that conversation. We did. When I came to you and told you uh, the vision I had for CityServe and what I felt like the Lord was calling me to do, you were, you were one of the only people who said, well, let's do it together. Let's, I mean, you, we have a lot of resources that you can use. Why do you have to invent it all from scratch? Why don't you just come alongside of us? And so that's been a part of our relationship since the beginning. And I was really inspired, I have to admit, just by the fact, I mean, at first it was like, wait a minute, this seems like almost a distraction because I'm trying to stay focused. And then I realized, no, this guy really cares about me. He really cares about what I'm doing and really wants me to be successful at what I'm, I'm striving to accomplish. And, and uh, I just appreciated that about you, Matt. And that was, honestly, that was when I decided I want this guy on my team. I want to work with this guy because um, I think that we're going the same direction. And I think if, if Love Inc. And, and City Server are successful in the things that we want to accomplish in the county, it's going to be mostly because we're working together. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm really excited about it, yeah. And, and it became apparent very quickly that the scope of what you wanted CityServe to do and become needed a foundation way larger than you could get working under Love Inc.'s umbrella. Yeah. Taking on your own thing opens up your potential to, to growing and into your what your whole vision is. It would never be stifled by any limitations of, of working with us. But I don't, I, I wouldn't have known that had <laughs> we not had that conversation. So it actually yeah. brought me to that point of discovery uh, and what the scope of uh, CityServe was going to be. It actually got a lot bigger after we had that conversation. I thought, ah, there's some things I really want to work hard at. So right now, uh, since for the last year or so, we've been, we've been reworking some of the foundation and making our office a little bit more efficient. Yeah. Um, and so there's, there's kind of this pyramid structure that we get uh, with love in the name of Christ, where we have, uh, you know, at the bottom, the, the clearinghouse, something to just take phone calls. And then we've got gap ministries like, oh, this really should be in our community and no one's doing it. And so yeah. that's the furniture program. If somebody else, another nonprofit was willing to tackle the furniture program, we wouldn't be putting volunteers into it, which is why we don't have a food pantry or a clothing closet um, because so many other places are doing it. I'd like to see loving go f up the pyramid to transformation. Transformation is the goal, right? The, the vision behind love in the name of Christ is Right, we're here to mobilize believers to transform right. our community. And GAP Ministries, they're, they're an essential part of that. But next up the, up the list is the, the teaching opportunities, the, the different classes, what, and, and identifying the cores of the problems instead of right, putting Band-Aids on things and helping people with furniture now, being able to have social workers eventually employed, um, or case workers, I should say, case managers, uh, people to sit down and find the core of these problems that these people are facing over and over again of, I've lost another place to live, right. or I've lost another vehicle, or whatever, whatever problem they're facing. Um, so we're not necessarily having to help them uh, year after year after year, but they're to the point where their lives have been transformed and they're eventually able to give back. And that transformation is really the goal long term of what love in the name of Christ is and has. That's good. Yeah, there's, so it's, it's the same aspect, but there's a lot of different sides to it, like a sphere. Yeah. Um, so the main aspect is, is with that we want to be a resource in our community. No one congregation can tackle any and all of the problems, right? right? Uh, so we want to be, hey, I don't know who's tackling this problem. We're going to call Love, Inc. I'm going to sit right here with you. Hey, Love, Inc., who's tackling this problem, right? We'll get the paperwork started and hand it off to another congregation of, okay, these people, whether they assist with housing or vehicles or cleaning or, or, or whatever problem these people are facing, um, we have one congregation that, that has someone who just deals with pests um, in their congregation. They're able to, to call upon that resource probably 10 times a year at no cost. Um, so we're, we want to be a hub. So you get rid of best pests that are bothering a congregation? Is that <laughs> what you do? That's right. When people <laughs> come in, they, no. Uh, but being able to plug these people into each other, and this person's their licensed bonded professional and, yeah. and in pest extermination. Um, and in Cowlitz County, sometimes there are, there are pests, in, in especially some of the low-income right. neighborhoods, uh, and, and people just don't know what to do. I want a fixed income. Uh, who can help me? 
and, and there's next to no resource for that. Yeah. Um, but instead of every single pastor having a Rolodex of the 76 or whatever churches we have in the community and then the resources on top of that, Love Inc., we want to be the hub so that everyone can reach out to us and we can direct them to each other. And then if there's a gap like the furniture program that nobody's doing currently, we can find enthusiastic volunteers, bring them together and address those needs. Yeah. The other half of things is uh, there are <laughs> there are congregations that are already serving. Um, and I really I really want to find ways to, to connect those programs, much like in the same way of having the resources. Um, another aspect on the same side of the sphere uh, would be that, that a church already has a program operating. They don't need to, to function anything, to find anything new to function, but they're able to operate on a larger right. capacity than what they're doing to serve in their community. So they let us know they can serve more people and we're able to send more people their way. Uh, and then there are congregations that almost don't have uh, any service in their congregation. And so I'd love to come into those congregations, invite people to serve with us, and start thinking and dreaming with them, build relationships with them, and find where their hearts break and find what they, how they want to express service. It can take just about any, any different shape and color that there is yeah. um, service, right? We have, we've got a group of gals that sew together, uh, and I think it used to be once a month, I think it's once every two months now, uh, but they've got a significant n number of sewing machines that they just bring together uh, just, just to be able to bless our community whether it's the Caring Pregnancy Center and taking a stand against abortion, um, or they're, they're creating items that, that can't be purchased uh, as disposable items in third world countries. Just to, be able, just to be able to bless. They don't want anything back. They're not fundraising. They just want to be able to reach out and encourage people and, and meet the needs of the world around them. Yeah, that's good. I've been mentoring people, I think, since I was 14 uh, is when I took on my first official person I was mentoring. Um, and, it's, and it's a little bit strange because some of the people that uh, when I was younger I would have considered mentoring, now those people are older than me and they would never admit Matt mentored me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's definitely one of those uh, interesting dynamics. Um, but, but helping them, I if they've asked me for help, uh, it's, it becomes a lot quicker uh, where we're able to sit down and, and break it down into the, the core components of you know, of who they are and who the Lord has built them to be, right? Everyone has similar, has similar building blocks, uh, whether it's the things that break their hearts or the things that really inspire them, the things that come naturally to them, whether they're, you know, mechanically minded or musical. Yeah. Um, and, and that conversation goes really smoothly. Uh, some of these people haven't asked me. Uh, and so I'll, I'll have conversations and we'll, we'll kind of do it relationally uh, where I'll just, I'll just talk with them. And, and just some of these volunteers uh, I'll, I'll, you know, they'll be alone with me for five hours while we go out and, and deliver furniture or repair bicycles. Right. Um, and so I'll have uh, a young person, and sometimes they're hurting, and sometimes they they're just a little bit lost, and they don't they don't know how to serve or how to express themselves in certain ways. Um, and so through our conversation, I'm I'm still looking for those those core components of who they are. Right. Everyone's got the same building blocks, just different sizes, shapes, and colors. Um, and the uh, these things project right infinitely outwards. Um, so, so the foundation of who we are, right, is is going to determine who we can grow into, right? Our, you know, our words become our actions, which yeah. become our habits, which yeah. determine our character, which determines our destiny, right? Um, so, breaking that all the way down into, okay, what are they thinking about? What do they cherish? What do they treasure and cherish, right? What do they fear? Right? What it, what comes naturally to them? Um, and being able to to help them see that from an outside perspective, like, oh. That, that rock that I was standing on is actually gold. It's, it's really, I mean, it's so valuable. And that stuff that I you know, occasionally kick around that's just tin cans that are just making noise. Right. Um, they're easy to distract me and they take up time, but they're not very useful. They're not very valuable. Um, so being able to, to help them see it from a little bit of an outsider's perspective, um, and, and then that helps them put their own foundations in place and, and choose what their character is going to be as they grow. Yeah. You know how to stir my heart. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just, it's amazing how, how much we think alike. And I, I look at you and I think, this is like a younger version of me. I, only I'm, I, I'm waiting till now to start this whole movement within the city. It makes me wish I would have been involved a lot younger because there's so much we can do. And there's so much that we can do together. I'm really excited about that part. And I just want to tell you thank you for saying yes to God. I mean, at somewhere along the, uh, somewhere along the road, you just said, I'm going to do what you want me to do, Lord. No matter how crazy it sounds to anybody else, I'm going to pursue it. And the result of that obedience on your part was that we have a director of Love, Inc. that really has vision for the future and is, is 
willing to stick with things until we get there. And I just want to tell you thank you. Yeah. You're a blessing. It's my pleasure. Yeah. We really hope today's episode was helpful. You'll find more resources and content to connect with other community leaders by going to our website, cityservecowlets.org. So it's been a joy to walk with you and we'll see you soon.